Hello, thank you for joining me once again. As ever, it really, really is appreciated. And I want to talk a little bit this morning about unconscious bias, largely because it is a word that is being put around at the present by a certain California <laughs> dweller and it gives me concern. In fact, unconscious bias is something that we work on often in therapy. And we use a tool often called Johari's Window. And I've mentioned this in the past. I've put a link to it down on the, the blurb underneath this video. And we work on the fact that our self, our mind is rather like a four paned window and in the top corner we've got the open self that we know all about others do the diametrically opposite window is the unknown self i found my find this hard to get my head around this is parts of our self that in theory is not known to us but not known to others either and then we have the other bottom pane, the hidden bits, the bits of ourselves that we are well aware of. Maybe what we see is our weaknesses, our not very good bits that we try to keep hidden. We hide them from others. And then the, the top pane is the blind bit. And this is the bit that is known to others but not known to ourselves. And this can include our unconscious bias. The bits that aren't known to us, and there might be some of that as well in the, the unknown part that isn't known to anybody, that we have biases that nobody is aware of, though they will be affecting our lives. And these biases, we've picked them up over the years from friends, parents, education, and they've become a part of ourselves. They might be little things like, um, uh, I don't like marmalade, but it doesn't matter. Nobody knows about it. But it can be larger, important things. They are biases against people, things, actions and so they can be biases that we hold against things such as ageism, sexism, disabilities, colour, racism. All of those can be covered in this unconscious bias. But to me by using that Instead of saying, do you know, that person is racist or holding your hand up saying, I am ageist, I am sexist. I feel it's a cop out. I, I'm concerned about it. And it sort of follows on from the move from a few people to what seems to be becoming more people, the use of the phrase, the words, oh, well, it's my truth. And that is instead of accepting that actually what you are saying, what you believe isn't true, but oh, it's my truth, so that's fine. Really? What if we all said that? we'd be in a bit of a pickle if we did. But I see that the inclusion of this sort of vocabulary in <clears throat> our day-to-day -day lives, it's a cop-out. It's a lack of self-responsibility, can be a lack of self-awareness, but definitely a lack of self-responsibility. Holding your hand up and saying, sorry, yep, I'm at fault. I was biased against that person. 
instead oh it was an unconscious bias so i wasn't aware come on we've got to be more self-aware we've got to be more responsible for what we think what we feel what we say what we do and stop copping out it might take bravery but there are a lot of people who don't seem to think it's upon them to say oh i'm sorry i made a mistake you need to have the guts to say you're sorry not at the drop of a hat but when it's genuinely felt but that's the trouble is it genuinely felt all the time or maybe i oh know it's it was an unconscious bias so it's not my problem i don't need to apologize no it was my truth so it's all right i'm going off on one so i'll stop there but thank you for listening and do check through on the johari window piece that i've put the link through to and take care take responsibility for your actions your words otherwise boy can they hurt thank you for listening speak to you soon bye